Hi, I'm David Griswood, and I'm lucky enough to have David Chappell uh, with me here. And we're going to ask a couple of questions about Windows Azure and the Azure platform. So the first question I've really got to ask is, David, um, why should ISVs and partners actually care about Windows Azure? The way I think about this is that Windows Azure is Microsoft's entry in this race for a whole new kind of platform. You think about it, how many different styles of platforms have emerged for business computing in the entire 50-year life of our industry? Let's count. Mainframes in the 60s, in the 70s, many computers. In the 80s, PCs, and then later in the 80s, I would say PC-based servers. In the 90s, in this decade, mobile phones. That's what, one, two, three, four, five platforms in 50 years of our industry. To me, cloud platforms are the sixth platform style to emerge. And so just as all of those other platform styles changed how we built apps, I think that cloud platforms have the same characteristics. I was talking to the CEO of uh, a European enterprise ISV recently, and he told me that his perspective was that not embracing the cloud, at least somewhat, was like people who would not move from DOS to Windows. It's interesting. Uh, I think that the overall perspective here is that it's a new platform style, and as with all the others, the challenge is to figure out how to get value for the service you provide, the product you sell, with a new platform style. There are some partners for whom I think Azure will not have any relevance, but not very many. I think just as these other platform styles have changed, not replaced, but enhanced and changed how we do computing, I think cloud platforms like Windows Azure will do the same thing. And so for that very reason, it seems to me that it's going to impact partners in the Microsoft world in particular in a big way. So Windows Azure is not the only cloud offering out there at the moment. So let's chat about a couple of the other ones out there. Let's start with Salesforce and the Force platform. How do they compare with Windows Azure and the Azure platform? It's an interesting question because cloud platforms are the emergence of a whole new platform style. And so what we're seeing is different vendors doing very different things. For example, with Force.com, as I understand it, my perspective on this, is that the story they tell is we'll come into your organization with this cloud platform. We have these very nice tools that will let you build a certain kind of application, data-driven enterprise apps. It's a large class of applications. Our tools let you build them very easily. In fact, our tools are so good, they will say, that you can build them without even having programmers sometimes. It's a great story. Is it true? Yes, I think it's true. Force has some very cool tools. I'm really impressed with their technology. In fact, what's in Force is a lot like what's in what Microsoft now calls their XRM platform, part of Dynamics CRM. It's remarkably similar. The technology is very cool. So that's a big plus, I think, for, for Force. Life is full of trade-offs. The trade-off for Force is that when you build an app with those tools and run on force.com in the cloud, the app is locked there. There's nowhere to go. You can't move the app back on premises. You get these nice tools, but you're locked into force. You're locked into the cloud as well. To compare that to Azure, Azure doesn't make the argument that it has these special high-level tools for building a certain kind of apps. Azure is a Windows platform. And so one could say that's a strength or a weakness. It has pros and cons like everything. Azure has an environment in the cloud that is very much like the on-premises world. So while it's possible to choose aspects of Azure that are cloud only, my expectation is that most folks won't do much of that. I think most people will build Azure apps that can move in a pretty straightforward way back and forth between the cloud and on-premises. So that's one big difference there. And of course, as I said, Azure's all about Windows. It's a Windows platform. And so for Windows developers, I think it's clearly a better choice than a more unique platform like Force. Still, is there space in the market for all these styles of things? There certainly is. And competition's a wonderful thing. Okay, then. So the other vendor I've got to, of course, mention at this point in time is Google. You know, everyone associates with the cloud, so perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about what they offer and how that compares. Google's platform, their cloud platform, is App Engine. App Engine is different from Windows Azure in some interesting ways. Um, 
App Engine originally was only a Python platform. They now support a large subset of Java. But the Python focus still seems fairly clear. Google's been clear as well about their intended goal for App Engine. It's pretty clear that App Engine is designed primarily to support Web 2.0 applications. And so if you are, say, a startup who wants to build a Web 2.0 app in Python, my opinion is App Engine can't be beat. It's a great platform for that sort of thing. Now, can Windows Azure support startups as well? Certainly it can. Uh, is it a Python environment? Not in the same way. It's, it's .NET, it's Windows. You can do Python, but it isn't so focused as, as App Engine. I would say that Azure targets a broader range of scenarios than App Engine. For example, in App Engine, there's no relational data, which is suggestive, I think, of Google's non-focus at this point on enterprise audiences, whereas Azure has relational data. So when you look at platforms, you can often infer what they're for by what they support, Google has actually been clear, no need to infer, for what this is for. So again, what we're seeing is a new platform style, new markets, all sorts of things emerging, and I think some pretty clear differences between App Engine and Azure. So of course the other big name would be Amazon, Amazon Web Services. So perhaps you know, you can tell us a little bit about how they compare and what their sort of strengths and differences and weaknesses are. One of the most remarkable things about cloud platforms is the fact that this whole new platform style was initiated, was led by a bookstore. I'm very impressed that Amazon was able to do this, had this idea, could make it real. Amazon Web Services has lots of happy customers for good reasons. They offer very nice raw VMs in EC2. They offer storage in S3 and so on. When you compare them to Windows Azure, some parts are quite similar. S3, their blob storage, is a good deal like the Windows Azure blob storage. SimpleDB in Amazon is broadly similar, solving an analogous problem, to Windows Azure storage tables. Perhaps the most important technical difference between uh, Windows Azure and Amazon's EC2 is one that I think not everyone understands. It is that both are based on virtual machines. In both, your app runs in a VM. But in Windows Azure, your app is running in an environment that is actually controlled by the platform. Your app does not have administrative access to the VM. You can't run or install anything that requires admin access to the VM. Whereas in Amazon's EC2, the VM is yours. You create it, you are root, you are admin, you can log into it remotely. You can't do these things in the same way with Windows Azure. Which one's better? Well, it depends, right? For apps that need, absolutely need admin access, you can't use Azure, at least not today. Microsoft tells us that at some point they'll also support broader levels of access. But at least in the first release of Azure, you cannot do things that require admin access. So from that point of view, some kinds of apps just need what Amazon offers. At the same time, for apps that don't need admin access, my opinion is that Azure is probably better because the trade-off for the control you get with EC2 is you've got to bear the burden and the cost of administering, of managing that VM yourself. Whereas in Azure, what you have is an application running on a platform where the platform does things like update the OS, patch the software, and so on. There's less administrative burden for you to do. So if you don't need the admin access, my belief is that you're probably better off with Windows Azure. Still, both styles of platform, I think, have a good future. We're going to see both these things existing for some time to come. Wow, well, thank you very much. That was absolutely fascinating. My pleasure. Good talking with you, Dan. Thank you.